Welcome to the School Mental Health Assist online tutorial series, supporting educator mental health literacy. This series has been developed to complement the Ontario Ministry of Education document, Supporting Minds, an educator's guide to promoting students' mental health and well-being. The first tutorial focuses on creating and sustaining mentally healthy classrooms, which is reflected in part one of the Supporting Minds document. Other tutorials in this series cover part two of the document and focus on common mental health problems that are seen in the classroom, like anxiety problems, mood problems, and attentional problems. Over the past few years, mental health leaders in Ontario school boards have provided information and support about supporting minds to a range of education professionals in an effort to build knowledge and understanding about mental health at school. Systematic facilitated learning in this complex area of work will continue across Ontario schools in alignment with each board's mental health and addiction strategy. This online tutorial series is meant to complement and reinforce the messages and supports provided through mental health leaders and other school mental health professionals. This creating and sustaining mentally healthy classrooms tutorial will provide provincial context, will introduce common language and frameworks, and will offer some ideas about how best to embed mental health promotion into everyday classroom practice. This online tutorial series is offered free of charge through School Mental Health Assist, a provincial implementation support team working alongside the Ontario Ministry of Education to help Ontario's 72 school districts to effectively promote student mental health and well-being. Welcome to the Creating and Sustaining Mentally Healthy Classrooms tutorial. You may want to watch the tutorial all at once or you may prefer to watch it section by section. The choice is yours. Each section will take about 10 minutes to complete. There are also some links, handouts, and videos that you may wish to access as part of your learning. Here is a clickable summary of the contents, which allows you the flexibility to navigate to a specific section. At any time during the tutorial, you can click the Home button at the top right of your screen. This will take you back to the summary page. You can also advance, pause, or go back and forth among the slides with your mouse or cursor at your own pace. You may wish to pause, for example, to answer reflection questions that are posed. You'll notice in the bottom right corner of the screen there is a double arrow. You can click on these arrows to make your screen full size. It can be difficult to learn about and discuss mental health problems. Is today a good day for you to engage with this topic? Though the content we will cover is fairly high level and positively oriented, depending on your own life circumstances, the material may be somewhat challenging. You can find support and resources in the section 5 of the Summary of Contents. If you choose to proceed, pace yourself. You can always come back. As you learn about mental health problems that your students may face, you will likely recognize that none of us is immune from experiencing these difficulties. In fact, most of us will be touched by mental health problems in our family, friends, or selves at some point in our lives. Learning the signs of difficulty and how to intervene early to get appropriate help can be part of your own self-care practice. In fact, personal resiliency is a very important skill to practice to support in others and to model for your students. Strategies for taking care of your emotional and physical health, like taking time for meals, exercise, sleep and hobbies, help you to be resilient in your daily work. And when you model your own self-care, you implicitly teach your students that it matters. You may wish to take a minute to read the handout and to think about the content and the connections to your practice in daily life and in the classroom before proceeding through the tutorial. The Ontario Ministry of Education develops Supporting Minds, a JK-12 resource document to help educators with their role in creating mentally healthy classrooms and in supporting students who may struggle with their emotions and behavior. You may find this to be a helpful resource day to day Many educators have told us they refer to it often when trying to support students in their class who appear to be struggling with some sort of emotional problem. You may like to review and or download part one of the resource if you want more information about creating and sustaining a mentally healthy classroom after completing this tutorial. As an Ontario educator, you probably already do much towards creating and sustaining a mentally healthy classroom setting. This tutorial will serve as a good reminder and may provide some new ideas for you to try. In section one, the tutorial will highlight the importance of mental health and well-being at school. 
We'll describe the link between positive mental health and academic achievement, and we'll offer some provincial context for this area of work. Educators have an important and unique role to play in supporting student well-being. Offering a supportive presence at school and taking the time to develop rapport and trust with students helps young people to thrive. Students have reported that having someone who believes in them makes a tremendous difference in how they do academically and how they feel about themselves. Can you think of a student who needed a little extra time and support with you in order to reach their academic potential? What do you think your relationship meant to this student? Often it isn't until years later that students can articulate the difference that an educator has made for them. Can you remember who those special teachers were for you? Trust that for some of your students it will be you that they remember most. In this video clip, Dr. Bruce Ferguson, Senior Consultant and Founding Director of the Child and Youth Mental Health Research Unit at the Hospital for Sick Children, offers a helpful perspective about the role that we can play at school in supporting student mental well-being. Press play if you would like to watch the video. They, they need to be safe. Nobody can learn if they're not safe. You and I can't learn, kids can't learn. They need to feel that they belong. They belong. This is their school. This is their community. This is their family. And how do they do that? By being loved in all of those places. Being loved, accepted, included, valued. These are the things they need to feel absolutely every day. And they have to be able to participate, not just in the games and the social things and the fun, but they have to see themselves as learners. If they don't see themselves succeeding academically, they do not feel part of the school. They need to be able to form great relationships. Okay? Life is all about relationships. They have to be able to cope with adversity. They have to be resilient. And they need to feel that you and I care about them. If they don't feel we care, why should they care about what we think? Right? I don't care about what the people who don't care about me think. And you don't care about what those people who don't care about you think. And kids are exactly the same. They will care about what we think about them when we care about them. Dr. Ferguson spoke about setting the conditions for healthy classroom environments. He notes that teachers are well positioned to create safe and caring spaces for learning, to observe changes in student behavior that can be early signs of a problem, and to provide support to students who need more help with their social and emotional skill development. As you work in your classroom supporting students in little ways every day, it can be helpful to know how your work fits with the big picture and the provincial vision. Your work in supporting student mental health and well-being is an essential part of the wider Ontario strategy. Ontario has a comprehensive 10-year mental health and addiction strategy, which began in 2011. Open Minds, Healthy Minds describes the province's goals and directions. There were 14 ministries involved in building the strategy, and in the first three years, the Ministry of Education was one of the key players involved in many of the 22 initiatives introduced. Part of the strategy included the development of supporting minds, the introduction of mental health leaders within each school board, and the creation of school mental health assist. Soon after this strategy was released, the renewed vision for Ontario students was described in Achieving Excellence a renewed vision for education in Ontario. In addition to prioritizing academic excellence, equity, and public confidence, a new pillar was introduced related to promoting well-being. The vision states that all students will develop enhanced mental and physical health, a positive sense of self and belonging, and the skills to make positive choices. You may wish to download this document and to view this brief video about the renewed vision. Building on the goals and achieving excellence, the Ministry of Education has articulated a well-being strategy that aligns and highlights the outstanding work that is already happening every day in schools. The key components of the Ministry's well-being strategy include positive mental health, safe and accepting schools, healthy schools, and equity and inclusive education. But we can't do it alone. We need to work with our partners in the health and social service sectors in order to build an integrated and coordinated system of care for children, youth, and families. 
Our work in schools can go a long way to promoting positive mental health and preventing problems in those most at risk. We need to work closely with partners to ensure warm handoffs for students who may need more intensive mental health supports and services. Fortunately, through Open Minds, Healthy Minds, systems are transforming to create smoother pathways to, from, and through care. To summarize, we are in a time of change and promise in Ontario. Ministries are transforming the way that services are delivered so that more Ontarians will be able to access high-quality evidence-based supports when they need it, where they need it. Schools are at the forefront of this change. In summary, Section 1 covered the importance of student mental health and well-being at school, the relationship between mental health and academic achievement, and government initiatives that support mental health and well-being. We are hopeful that this context assures you that, as an educator, you have an important role to play in supporting student mental health, but that you are not alone in this effort. Student mental health is a complex topic, and there are many terms, concepts, and opinions that can, at times, cause confusion. This section of the Creating and Sustaining Mentally Healthy Classrooms tutorial provides some clarity on these issues for Ontario educators. Specifically, Section 2 contains helpful terms and definitions that will be introduced in order to provide common language for our collaborative work in supporting student mental health in Ontario schools. It is helpful to first understand the terms mental health and mental illness. Sometimes when we hear the term mental health, our minds default to images that we associate with a serious mental illness. But mental health is actually a good thing, the positive state of social and emotional flourishing that we hope for our students and for ourselves. Mental illness, in contrast, reflects difficulties with thoughts, emotions, or behavior that interfere with day-to-day -day functioning. In school, problems like this are exhibited in many different ways. Subsequent tutorials will provide you with more detail about the common problems you might observe in the classroom and how you can provide support. Mental health and mental illness may be seen as residing along a continuum, and at any time, any one of us will find ourselves somewhere along this line, feeling more or less well. Our Indigenous partners have recently released an important paper on this topic. This may be of interest to you, particularly if you serve students from Indigenous communities. The philosophies and teachings in this work are relevant to all schools and classrooms in Canada. And taking this idea of a continuum a step further, leaders in the field have introduced a dual continuum model for understanding the relationship between mental health and mental illness. This model helps us to understand that those experiencing a mental illness can also be mentally well, just as someone who is experiencing diabetes can learn strategies for coping to ensure that their lives stay in balance in spite of their physical condition. For more information about mental health and mental illness, you may wish to review this video by the Center for Addiction and Mental Health, where these concepts are further explored. Resilience is another key term that is associated with positive mental health but can be easily misunderstood. According to Dr. Michael Unger, director of the Resilience Research Center at Dalhousie University, resiliency is the ability to bounce back from setbacks, learn from failure, be motivated by challenges, and believe in your own abilities to deal with the stress and difficulties in life. You may wish to visit the Resilience Research Center to watch a quick video on supporting youth resilience and to view other related resources. Our role in schools is to help students to acquire the skills, attitudes, knowledge, and the habits that lead to resilience in life, and also to notice and support students who struggle along the way. There are many approaches designed to support student positive mental health and resiliency at school. In fact, there is a dizzying array of products, resources, speakers, and services that cross an educator's desk these days that claim to enhance student well-being. Terms like social-emotional learning, Mindfulness, positive psychology, and self-regulation are commonly associated with student well-being. It can be confusing to know where to begin. Grouping these approaches into those related to skills, attitudes, knowledge, and or habits can be a helpful way to organize this busy field of work. Social-emotional learning skills help us to navigate through life socially and academically. The Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning, or CASEL, 
has identified five interrelated sets of competencies. Self-awareness, knowing what we are feeling in the moment and having a realistic assessment of our own abilities. Social awareness, understanding what others are feeling and being able to take their perspective. Self-management, handling our emotions so they facilitate rather than interfere with the task at hand. Relationship skills, establishing and maintaining healthy and rewarding relationships and responsible decision-making, making decisions based on an accurate consideration of all relevant factors and the likely consequences of alternative courses of action. Research indicates that teaching SEL skills in a sequential, active, focused, and explicit or safe manner not only leads to improvements in student attitudes and behaviors, but also enhances academic performance by a significant degree. Do you see a relationship between these social-emotional competencies and the Ontario Report Card learning skills and work habits? Or the All About Me or an Individual Pathways plan? What are you already doing to support skill development in these areas in your classroom? There are a number of package programs that help educators to teach social-emotional learning skills. However, these are costly, sometimes seen as an add-on and don't always align well with Ontario curriculum. School Mental Health Assist is piloting a number of evidence-based, implementation-sensitive skill development methods that can be embedded into the daily life of Ontario schools. Stay tuned. An attitude is a way of thinking, feeling, or behaving that reflects a state of mind or disposition. It's not always easy to see the positive things in life, but having a good attitude and outlook makes solving life's problems much easier. The positive psychology movement, led by Seligman and colleagues, offers one way to inspire positive attitudes in children and youth. They suggest techniques for building optimism, persistence, and flexibility. There are also approaches that are designed to build compassion, like roots of empathy or belonging, like inclusion-oriented programming, or positive identity, purpose, and hope, like indigenous land-based teachings. As a mini-example of the sort of technique that can work to develop more positive attitudes over time, take the 21-day gratitude challenge. Every evening, reflect back on your day and jot down three things that you are grateful for. See how noticing these things can shift your attitude. Increasingly, mental health is a topic of conversation amongst young people. When individuals are aware of ways to maintain positive mental health, how to recognize signs of trouble and where to get help, they can engage in self-care in a long-term manner. And schools are an excellent place to build student mental health literacy. The health and physical education curriculum is one place where students learn about mental health and mental illness. Knowledge can also be built through courses like civics and careers, biology, English, and drama. And of course, these topics will come up spontaneously in response to events and situations that students are aware of. As teachers, it can at times feel uncomfortable to provide instruction in this area. School Mental Health Assist has a number of resources to deepen your learning so that you can effectively offer instruction and also feel prepared for student questions that may come. Over time, developing knowledge, attitudes, and skills can lead to good habits that support our mental health and well-being. These habits can be nurtured explicitly through practice, being present in the moment, healthy, active living, mindfulness, prayer, and help-seeking are examples of habits that we and our students can attend to and can build into our daily way of being. In our hurried lives, we sometimes forget to notice the small things. The beauty around us, the gesture of a colleague, the kindness of a stranger. We sometimes even forget to breathe. There is evidence to show that the deep, diaphragmatic breathing, especially in times of stress and discomfort, can be a helpful habit. Take a moment to breathe. Now think about the students in your school or class. What knowledge, attitudes, skills, or habits could be most helpful to nurture in these students? You may wish to learn about Josh's story of resilience. If you do, click your mouse or cursor on the link. Learning in this section clarified the meaning of mental health and mental illness and focused on the terms and language used in related discussions. Mental health is a key foundation of school success. Students with good mental health who are socially connected and resilient 
have a better chance of reaching their potential. Developing positive mental health is foundational to student achievement. Using a tiered model of support, we can help to ensure positive mental health for all students, preventative strategies for those at risk, and more intensive interventions for those experiencing significant mental health problems. This section introduces the Aligned and Integrated Model, AIM, for student mental health at school. It is anticipated that by working through this section, you will gain greater understanding of tiered models of support, the AIM approach in particular, and your role as an educator within this model. Tiered models of support are familiar. Think for a moment about strategies that help prevent the spread of a cold and flu at school. What sort of things do you do in your classroom to reduce the spread of cold and flu for all students? Perhaps you thought of things like specific times for hand washing or making hand sanitizer and facial tissues available in the classroom. These are tier one strategies for all students. Now what do you do for students in your class who may be more susceptible to colds and flu, like those with immune deficiency or who would require reminders, additional modeling support? You may want to have thought about spending a bit more time with them, reminding them to wash their hands, use hand sanitizer, or avoid proximity to those who are ill. These are tier two strategies designed to prevent the spread of colds and flu amongst those who may be more at risk of developing illness. Now think about what you would do for the few who are symptomatic in your class, that is showing signs of fever, headache, and congestion causing an inability to learn. What might you do? These are tier three intervention strategies. Perhaps you would call home to let the parent or guardian know what you are observing. You wouldn't diagnose the child to say she has H1N1 or influenza A, but you would describe the symptoms you see. And if the student takes a few days off and then returns, you would likely offer care and support and extra vigilance with hand washing, etc., as you welcome them back to school. How might this connect to the way you can create a mentally healthy classroom environment, which can reduce the incidence of symptoms of mental health problems? Supporting mental health can be thought of using the same triangle. That is, classroom educators can provide universal strategies to create mentally healthy environments and to build resiliency for all students at Tier 1. Educators and mental health professionals can work together to provide extra support and increase doses of social-emotional skill building for some students at Tier 2. And mental health professionals can also support the few students in need of clinical assessment, intervention or crisis response, and can help to facilitate a smooth transition to, from, and through community mental health services as needed. Note that schools are in an optimal position to provide support through universal mental health promotion and prevention programming, but we can't do it alone. To provide a full system of care that offers support at universal, targeted, and intensive levels, we need to work seamlessly with our community partners who have particular expertise in working with students requiring clinical intervention. Take a minute and think about what a tiered approach looks like in your school. What sorts of Tier 1 universal supports are in place? How does your school support students who may be at risk for developing emotional difficulties? What is the pathway to care for students who are showing signs of significant mental health problems? This diagram shows the aligned and integrated model for student mental health at school. AIM offers guidance about the sorts of activities known to be most helpful at each tier of intervention. It rests upon the foundation of strong leadership at school and classroom level, depicted at the base of the triangle. We believe that the school leader has a particularly important role in setting a tone that creates a mentally healthy school environment. At Tier 1, AIM has borrowed from the Foundations for a Healthy School resource to articulate the categories of universal strategies that best support student well-being. When educators welcome, include, promote, understand and partner, students have a better sense of belonging at school and can feel confident that there are caring adults that they could turn to if they were having difficulties academically, socially, behaviorally, or emotionally. Students who may be at risk for mental health problems certainly benefit from these universal strategies, but they require a bigger dose of skill building and support. AIM suggests that the Tier 2 strategies focus on strengthening protective factors, reducing risk factors, 
and providing support and accommodation. Strategies for students who are experiencing significant distress are represented in the top of the triangle. When we offer proactive skill development and caring foundations and identify and prevent problems early, fewer students will require intensive mental health interventions. But there will always be some students who struggle with a mental health problem in spite of our best efforts. Trained mental health professionals within school boards and or in the community provide strong evidence-based interventions for these students. Think to yourself for a minute about drawing and everything we have just discussed. Make some notes about how your school can create a culture that supports positive mental health and well-being in practical and effective ways. What are some tangible things you can do in your role? Learning in this section included an overview of tiered support models for mental health, an introduction to the aligned and integrated model for student mental health at school, and describe briefly your role as an educator within this tiered model. Sections one through three of the tutorial on mentally healthy classrooms provided provincial context, offered a summary of common terms, and introduced the multi-tier AIM approach to supporting student mental health at school. In this final section, we move to the applications of this learning, putting everyday mental health practices into place to create and sustain mentally healthy classrooms. The learning objectives for Section 4 are to become aware of the Supporting Minds document, to become familiar with the five elements in Tier 1 within the AIM approach, to begin to think about everyday practices to add to your mentally healthy classrooms. When it comes to general well-being at school, what do all students need? Here are a few things mentioned by educators around Ontario in answer to this question. Staff who provide these things go a long way toward creating a caring classroom environment where students learn academically at the same time that they grow in character and confidence. What specifically can you do each day to create a mentally healthy classroom environment? We often do all of the right things some of the time. The question is whether we do this in a systematic, intentional, and explicit way as part of a daily routine. The AIM approach offers a frame of reference for thinking about the range of Tier 1 strategies we can employ. As a reminder, AIM suggests we can welcome by creating inviting and supporting environments at school, include by engaging students from all diverse backgrounds in meaningful ways, promote positive mental health through explicit instruction in social emotional skills, attitudes, knowledge, and habits understand students' needs and strengths and have a good base of knowledge about mental health and partner with students, families, and community agencies to promote optimal student mental health. The foundation base implies that the most effective support for the student occurs when classroom practices are aligned with a school-wide strategy and foundations for a healthy school. Does your school have a mental health and well-being strategy? What can you do to learn about and support the strategy? This piece of the Tier 1 Triangle speaks to welcoming social and physical environments. For many years, Ontario schools have been working to build safe and accepting schools and classrooms. When schools are welcoming, inclusive, reliable and safe physically and emotionally, students are able to feel a sense of belonging and value. When students don't have to worry about safety, bullying, fitting in or unpredictability, they can be more regulated and ready to learn. Think about your classroom this year. What are some ways that you create a welcoming environment for your students? Consider what you see on the screen. Think about what you already do or how you might accomplish these things in your school and in your class. Take a minute and jot down your thoughts on how do I get there? Here are a few practical everyday strategies to help with creating a welcoming classroom. Note that little things can make a big difference. Greet each child by name as they enter your classroom. Mirror diversity in visual representations in the classroom and choice of study materials. Notice and celebrate student kindness. What would you add to this list?
This piece of the Tier 1 triangle speaks to including and engaging all students in life. This involves providing instruction that optimizes the interests and talents of your students to enhance the learning experience for all. It can also include providing space for student voice and student leadership, particularly on topics related to mental health promotion. Students are often eager to learn about mental health and to make a positive difference for their peers. With appropriate adult support, they can do just that. Think about your classroom this year. What are some ways that you include and engage your students in learning and in school life? Consider what you see on the screen. Think about what you already do or how you might accomplish these things in your school and in your class. Take a minute and jot down your thoughts on how do I get there? Here are a few practical everyday strategies to help with including and engaging students. Appeal to student interests and known strengths to enhance engagement in learning. Review your lesson plans for the week ahead from the lens of equity. Are all voices and perspectives included? Support student leadership and mental health awareness and stigma reduction. What would you add to this list? This piece of the Tier 1 triangle speaks to understanding. Knowing your students and knowing enough about mental health to be able to actively promote this and to recognize when a student may be struggling with a problem in this area. Think about your classroom this year. What are some ways that you work to really know your students? Would you be able to detect change in behavior that might be associated with a mental health problem? <clears throat> Think about your classroom this year. What are some ways that you work to really know your students? Would you be able to detect a change in behavior that might be associated with a mental health problem? Consider what you see on the screen. Think about what you already do or how you might accomplish these things in your school and in your class. Take a minute and jot down your thoughts on how do I get there? Here are a few practical everyday strategies to help with building understanding. Write down at least one interest, fact, or strength regarding every student in your class. Scan your class for changes in behavior each week. Drop in grades, missing class, isolating, increased irritability. Participate in other smart tutorial sessions to learn more about common problems you might observe in your classroom. What would you add to this list? This piece of the Tier 1 triangle speaks to explicitly promoting mental health and well-being daily as a part of the regular classroom routine. This involves enhancing students' skills, attitudes, knowledge, and habits related to their mental health. This can happen formally through instruction in subject areas like health and physical education, civics and career studies, and drama or English. It can also happen more informally on the edges of the school day, as students gather to begin the day, during transitions, or as teachable moments arise. Think about your classroom this year. What are some ways that you promote skills, attitudes, knowledge, and habits associated with mental health? Consider what you see on the screen. Think about what you already do or how you might accomplish these things in your school and in your class. Take a minute and jot down your thoughts on how do I get there? Here are a few practical everyday strategies to help with promoting mental health with your students. Notice and reinforce students for using social emotional skills like help seeking, goal setting, and conflict resolution. Use calming activities when the energy levels are too high for optimal learning. Example, glitter jar activity, mindfulness moment. Explicitly teach time management and study skills and Model optimism, coping skills, and resilience in the face of obstacles and adversity. What would you add to this list? Finally, this piece of the Tier 1 triangle speaks to partnering with home, school, and community organizations to build mental health and well-being. It truly does take a village. Parents and families are a critical partner when it comes to student well-being. School and school board resource professionals can also provide support. Your board mental health leader is an important resource. Community organizations like Public Health, CMHA, mental health agencies and hospitals also have key roles to play. 
Knowing the pathways to, from, and through services will help you to know who to partner with and when. Understanding and promoting positive mental health in schools is a shared responsibility of families, educators, and community partners. Think about your classroom this year. What are some ways that you partner with families, school personnel, and community organizations to enhance student mental health? Consider what you see on the screen. Think about what you already do or how you might accomplish these things in your school and in your class. Take a minute and jot down your thoughts on how do I get there. Here are a few practical everyday strategies to help with partnering. Share summaries of mental health awareness. Provide parents with high quality information about mental health in newsletters. Example, about kids health on the SMH Assist website. Find out the name and contact information of your board mental health leader. Find out the path to services within the school board. What would you add to this list? Learning in this section was meant to cover the concepts that you see on the screen. Mental health is a key foundation of school success. Students with good mental health who are socially connected and resilient have a better chance of reaching their potential. Developing positive mental health is foundational to student achievement. In reflecting on this module, hopefully you have also thought about the conditions and strategies that may also increase your own sense of well-being. Evidence shows that when we model how we nurture and care for ourselves, that we teach our students how to do the same. In other words, they learn from what they see us doing. Thank you for taking the time to learn with us in this online tutorial series from School Mental Health Assist. Feel free to contact us for more information. Need help now? You can find support and resources at these websites on the screen. Need help now? You can find support and resources at www.mentalhelp.com.